Welcome to Artless Nap. I'm here with Buck. <laughs> Buck, gently. <laughs> um, Blaine Mayo. Uh, I am Anthony Pago. And yeah, we just like to have fun on Artless Nap. We talk about like whatever the hell we want to. Um, now I'm scared to interview you because you look like Doctor Who. And that to me, that's one of my heroes. And I think I think you like him too, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can say that I'm uh, a, a little obsessed, I guess. I have multiple <laughs> Doctor Who tattoos. I just got Gallifrey and tattooed on me. And Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 a tad, I'm a tad bit of a fan. You're a fan. Um, so I, I'm wearing a shirt that also is a rare thing. I am a fan. I'm, I'm more of the jeans and a t-shirt type guy in restaurants, and so I think with my Whovian display, I'm also just like... I wear one thing and, you know, maybe have some toys around. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're really out. You've got, like, the hottest outfit for the day. You won the award for summertime. Yeah, yeah, for the summertime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, trust me, I, I waited until the last second when I was heading over here to put this on. Yeah, well, uh, I'm glad that you came out with a magnificent display. Uh, I can't imagine. Now, is this clip-on or is this tie-tie? No, this is tie-tie. Oh, yeah. I, see, I can't even do that. Did you learn specifically because of Doctor Who, or did you already... You, yes. you did? <laughs> was this an internet thing? Uh, yeah, I looked on YouTube how to tie a tie, so I sat... I was actually with one of my uh, best friends, Jessica, um, and we bought a real bow tie, and we were practicing on our legs trying to tie the bow tie. And wow. She did it faster than me. Uh, so are we talking, like, minutes, hours... Oh, it was prob- we probably spent a good, like, 45 minutes trying okay, to learn. Okay, that's not too bad. No. I think it'll take me a week or two to figure out. It, it, it's, take- it's, taken me, it's taken me months to get to the point of being able to tie it without a mirror. Okay, yeah. So I can tie it now, and it'll be pretty on point. And you said you, um, at one point, had a wig, which is super common for cosplay, but you've grown your hair out to look on point. Yeah, to uh, yeah, it's cut very specifically. Yeah, but you've the, got you're the doctor with plugs, so you yeah, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but scenes. they're clear, so you can't really <laughs> like most people don't even realize they even your have glasses them. are fantastic. And I know this is a podcast, but show the camera like your watch. Yeah. Oh yeah, the watch. This thing, I actually uh, freeze frame the show just to see what kind of faceplate he had. Yeah. So I could find the right faceplate for it, and it's the even numbers are numbered instead of like. Yeah. The one, three, or the three, nine, or six, nine, See, this 12. is way beyond the detail. I mean, I love the stories and the writing, and I'm, I geek out on it, but you you beat me and geeked them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, there's people who beat me and geeked them. Yeah. So, like, I'm only, like, I'm just, like, just a little bit beyond the minimum amount to be a Whovian. Like, yeah. yeah you in know, comparison to some of these people. I yes. mean, I got the tattoo. Um, that's the easy way, right? You just get the right tattoo, and then you can go yeah. into the Doctor Who heaven if there is one. Or yeah, 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 yeah. The parallel universe. I get yeah. visited, but I guess it's like a signal, like, visit me, visit, take me in the box. Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when when, uh, when all hell breaks loose, he'll save us first. Right. Because he's like, oh, yeah, no, you're fans. You're my fans, yeah. <laughs> he's always liked his fans. That's what his companions are supposed to be, right? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, it would make sense. He would just have to have, like, a, like the biggest Doctor Whoacon. Whoacon. <laughs> <laughs> and just you know, act like he's you know, like pay somebody to to run it, and he'd know the right date to pick everybody. Oh yeah, up. well, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> during the during the actual Doctor Who con in Cardiff. Yeah. So if there if there's other like <laughs> religions who also got the end of the world right, just pay attention to your Whovian friends, and if they disappear, best be praying. And- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's the rapture is the Whovians. <laughs> Who knew? Well, they'll be the first to go. Anybody with a time machine, but I don't I don't see any other religions that are built with time machines into the the Lord. Yeah, no, no. Everything's about you know time progressing forward, and we're like, well, no, no we're out. We're we're done. We're yeah. we're gonna go beyond this after all this calamity happens. And we'll be got a lot happier. somewhere else, either somewhere before, somewhere after, or somewhere altogether different. Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't want to be left in a, another dimension like uh, I was Rose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rose. Oh, Rose. Rose. But she got her own doctor, so she can't complain. Oh, no, no. That's a good thing. I mean, yeah, so she, yeah. So she gets into this whole other universe and gets a doctor. Right. I mean, you're supposed to just in, enjoy the times you have and the things you did. But she did so much, she deserves kind of an award, some sort yeah, of Yeah, comfort, yeah, yeah. You know? Like, oh, yeah. Not everybody gets that when you You, you survive Eccleston. <laughs> <laughs> have you... When, when did you get into Doctor Who? What was your first uh, um, I, I grew up watching it. Me and my dad used to watch it like all the time. Like the old TV shows? Mm-hmm. That... Yeah, Tom Baker was my first Doctor. Okay. See, I didn't the know... first Doctor I remember. Well, I kind of remember uh, 
the doctor right before him. Um, and I can't remember his name right now. Yeah. Um, I think it was right before him. It may have been right after. I don't know. The one with the celery. Mm-hmm. I kind of cursory remember that. I've seen them all since, but I don't remember their names. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I barely know. There's like jelly bellies and like yeah. uh, fish and sticks. And I know some of their foods, but not all yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then, so did you, did, were you aware, I wasn't aware there was a movie. And then, like, I, I barely saw some of the, the shows when I was young and growing up. When the reboot happened, you know, I started watching as many as I could, yeah. you know, kind of stomach, because they were, like, black and white, and, you know, Yeah, 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 I mean, you just really, you really have to be, like, a true fan of sci-fi to, like, like a really hard, like, loving old sci-fi. Yeah. Because there's a difference between liking the new sci-fi and the old sci-fi. Yeah. Because then you had to use your imagination a little bit more. Right, right. They just gave you the basic structure so that you, then you could be all like, oh, yeah, no, I see where they're going. Right. I mean, back then, yeah, that, it, it's low budget now, still, be the, compared to BBC, like, standards in the past, you know, certain shows, mm-hmm. it's still low budget-ish. Um, but, it's like Star Wars low, low budget. Star Wars was a low budget movie that invented some of the best, you know, special yeah, yeah, effects exactly. ever. So they've got all of this under their belt, and then people who you know do this, this is their dream, is to do those type of like effects. So you just get the be- the the funnest thing. Like it's great for kids, but you know, there's like some adult shit in there. So it's well, you know, people need to realize that when you look at like a lot of the classic ones, like. Oh, the Odalic is a trash can turned upside down. <laughs> yeah. With, like, Squished. with, yeah, with half, like, balls cut in half and glued yeah, to prob- it. Those are probably from, like, a uh, hose. I remember, remember yeah. hose used to come in eggs. Like. Yeah, this is a whisk. <laughs> Suction cup. I mean, seriously. I mean, look at it. Cheap stuff. <laughs> Super cheap stuff, but it's it just goes to show that they're terrifying, and yet they're, it's, like, ridiculous how they're, like, designed, but... yeah. Yeah, somebody in the show they're still terrifying, and so it is. It's like a tank. I mean, that's that's because of the World War Two Nazi shit. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That was a good I mean, episode, it elicits yeah. all of these like you know like fears and all the Europeans' mm-hmm. minds. I guess if we did it here and for Native American or for uh, for American heritage, if Doctor Who was kind of born here, you'd have to have like either some Native Americans or like I don't know like the Spaniards, you know, you know fighting for mm-hmm. Mexico or. Maybe the the French or the British or something like that. It'd have to be based on on their invasions with all of the colonists here and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, the stories of Doctor Who are absolutely already been played out in history. Yeah, you can point to like the basic structures of like you know, an imposing you know government or you know tribes of people coming in and taking over everything and subjugating and yeah. But but there are good ones too. There's always like the immigrants, like the cool aliens, who are just chill with everybody. Right, and, right, right. Working in the industries too, and they're all friends. And they do do to show like that. One of my favorites of the reboot, the original series was oh, what was her name? Like Spritz Me. She's like moisturize. Oh, oh, uh, Lady Cassandra. Yeah, Lady yes. Cassandra. So that's the biggest dick in the universe at that point. It was a human. It was yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the biggest, the the last human. I'm the last human. <laughs> right. And yet the biggest asshole. <laughs> being rolled around and yeah, she, yeah. she planned all this devious shit and yeah yeah the doctor adores humans he thinks they're great i think well, well she changed her mind at the end once she saw herself at young come on can you really apologize that shit away no you can't but she was dying anyway so oh, at least at least there was some retribution because she realized how much of a bitch she was right so let that be a lesson to you baby boomers before you get too old and are sorry for the things that you've done maybe voting wise Maybe you'll, maybe you got somebody elected that uh, you regret these mm. days. Um, you know, it's not too late to say sorry, and don't wait until that very last moment uh, so that you just don't look like a total asshole. Yeah. You know? and then that, at that point, there's nothing you can do. You've missed your you missed your chance, right? Yeah, and a few people buy it. You know, your funeral, but most people just most people are like, yeah, whatever, yeah, dude's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> let that be a lesson from doctor who <laughs> <laughs> don't be a dick don't be a dick what else do you do um i do art yeah yeah lots of it lot lots of it uh-huh. and what's it look like what kinds what, what are your mediums what's your favorite? well um right now i've really been enjoying the epoxy clay the epo- okay. yeah it's okay. a it's a two-part uh clay that you actually mix together it's a hardener and a resin uh-huh. and then you you know shape it use water to shape it and everything yep. and it'll dry overnight and harden. so how long yeah so you have overnight that means you can use like the clay sculptor tools and yeah 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 just, can you use you just got to work a little bit quicker yeah uh than regular clay because it dries overnight it'll actually dry my i made a couple of balls for another sculpture and they dried within hours wow like they were rock hard 
Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I've been looking at, like, just doing backyard kind of, uh, like, making molds or casting, simple types of casting. And some of the cool things I've seen is the, they just shave foam, and then they yeah. they do kind of lost wax casting and sand and stuff like that. But that sounds like a cool way to make, like, a mold, like, the, the beginning, the original, that would, wouldn't die out. Like, if you yeah. use foam, it's gone forever, and, you know, just gotta, it's a one-time thing. But if you use that... And you've got original that you can keep casting in these cheap ways in the yeah. backyard. That's not a bad idea. All right. It, it's, it's, it's worth giving it a shot because I know that, one, it will adhere to anything. Yeah. I mean, and when it adheres, it's stuck. Right. No joke. Okay, yeah. so this is expensive? This is cheap? No, it's cheap. I got uh, five pounds for, like, I think it was, like, 35, 40 bucks. Yeah. Like yeah. What's your, what's your next art looking like? What are you doing? Like, what's your thought? Oh, uh, well, right now I'm working on a uh, sacred geometry piece. Sacred geometry? Yeah. Which is... Uh, well, it's 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 along the lines of sacred geometry. It's actually the graphing of pi. Um, so when you graph pi, it actually uh, becomes a sphere. And there's a bunch of... like It's really... Interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. And so, like, uh, the guy who commissioned me to do this piece, I'm like, okay, we can do that. And then I'm going to take out the center of it and actually paint uh kind of like a sacred heart kind of thing yeah 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 that's cool yeah i mean that's still it's gonna, it's gonna be it's, it's, it's gonna be kind of festival yes like festival kid type stuff but it's sacred geometry yeah it's it high so yeah. and there's lots of i'm making it more an intellectual like, <laughs> it's like, it's like no i want i want something smart <laughs> is this the first one you've done like that mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah got any what, what do you and i have some tricks that i'm gonna try and oh yeah yeah some tricks, some math tricks, uh, some <laughs> some ways to uh, actually create the piece and create clean, crisp, oh. perfect lines. Oh, okay, well, that is interesting. Because with sacred geometry, that's what you're going to need. You need that right. precision. Sure. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, I mean, well, are you like carving shit into a lens and making the sun I'm, burn it in? I'm at not gonna. Intervals? I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you off mic what I'm going to do. But okay. I'm not. I'm not going to give it away because I want to start doing, uh, like, oh. live paintings okay. this way. Interesting. So I don't want to give away no, yeah. the trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, get the trick, like, yeah. Yeah, see, right, so I'll it. tell you at, uh, off, off the mic for Own sure. And then I'll tell you what I'm doing. Once people I think figured it out, it. come back on and we'll talk more about, like, the technique and everything. Yeah, and Once yeah. everybody knows. And yeah, people. yeah, once I, once I do it live a couple times, then people will see. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll get that dick that copies you and then posts it on. That, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> they won't do it with my pizzazz. <laughs> I don't, that's true. I don't know how people think they can get away with that shit. They like, like, everybody's friends doesn't have somebody else's friends where they, like. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Look at this dude. Just fucking copying you. <laughs> if you're if you're thinking about being an artist, anybody listening out there, uh, don't just copy other people's shit. Like, sure, um, do your own studies at home. That's fine. Like, take take the techniques they like that you like about those things. Make your own versions of it. But then, before you make something else for somebody else that you charge money for, add some some different characteristics. Please, some please flair. add some difference. <laughs> add, add some of you in this, please. <laughs> it's just really rude. It's lazy. It's called forgery. <laughs> yeah, it's also illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just slightly illegal. I mean, I hope you have a good lawyer. And it's boring to like not make your own shit. I mean, yeah, that's art's hard. That's why everybody isn't a fucking artist yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it's not easy it's no. not <laughs> that's also for anybody who's out there wondering like why i have to spend a few hundred bucks on oops i'm sure that was loud on the, the microphone why you have to spend a few hundred bucks for like some small you know wall mounted piece of 2d art uh it's because you're not you're not paying for like the hour and a half two hours where they were really really working hard and painting in those you know, spots. You're not paying them by the hour for those hours. You're paying for their education, their life experience, uh, like figuring out those materials takes forever. You, that's like going to college. And some people literally have gone to college for a long time and invested mm -hmm. their own money. And that's that people don't pay back loans these days because it's way too hard. Yeah. It's way too expensive. Yeah, oh, They're in debt for the rest of their life. So you're just literally, you know, paying for their livelihood and like the, like the, the time and money that they put into it. Yeah, so. you have to, you have to take into consideration that most artists and this is just most will sell only maybe one piece a month yeah yeah that's if they're pushing i mean if they're pushing themselves yeah like, i mean they could like i know i i average about one a month yeah i mean you you can be good and like you can sell every day but like a lot of artists just don't like a lot of people just don't think they're artists they're making art and they're artists but 
they don't they hate to call themselves an artist and they sit stuff in their closet and those people yeah. don't sell anything they're yep. spending all their time on this stuff and i just I, I was just talking to a friend about submitting to biting the apple and she was okay. like i don't think i can and i'm like no you gotta show people i'm like what's the worst that's gonna happen you don't get in and what if you lost mm-hmm. nothing you met people you had a great time you had a great night it really is not a bad life being an artist. It's just, um, man, you've already decided you're not going to make a crap ton of money. <laughs> no. <laughs> even think about it. Like even the big artists that they make like movies, you know, for, um, they, they ended up being in debt or like fucked over by somebody or mm-hmm. you know, life's expensive. Life's, life's hard. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, you, you're going to spend that money somehow, even if you get a little bit for a few big shows or whatever. So, um, Every, every artist is kind of working hard and, and not, yeah. not doing so well on some days, on some months, and doing yeah. fantastic on others. Yeah. Uh, but we got to pay them. You know? yeah. I, I, we got to pay everybody else, too. I'm not saying only artists get the fair shake. Like, I think we should be paying everybody in all occupations right. where you're working hard. You should be paid a fair wage. Like, yeah. You should be able to live in the world. You shouldn't have to have 14 jobs and still be impoverished and stuff. That shouldn't exist. But. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why with my art I always offer like prints and stuff for like 10 bucks. Yeah. Because, you know, they still it, I think everybody should have access to art. And right. so, and that's a great way to uh kind of make up that cost that you're not selling big pieces. Mm-hmm. Selling prints is you can get decent prints for cheap. Right. I mean, you can make, you know, up to, you know, easily $9 per print you sell. Yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to uh, display it well and you have to price it right yeah and then give people a little bit of shade to stand under and they'll sit there and stare at your prints yeah um we're gonna take a quick break get these cameras rolling again um you are listening to artless nap we will be right back welcome to welcome to artless nap welcome back to artless nap i am anthony pago this is Blake Shelton. <laughs> Blake Shelton, okay. <laughs> okay, we'll take Blake Shelton, sure. Blaine yeah. Mayo? Mayo, yeah. See, I, I don't know. I'm so bad. You'll listen, If you ever listen to any of the other podcasts, every time somebody comes on, I don't get their name right. And this is not like a shtick. This is not me. <laughs> the second the second I have to use my brain, it's not there. Yeah, it's yeah, just not uh, there. With <laughs> names, with like dates. I couldn't tell you what the day of the week is usually. As most people can attest that know me, I'm horrible with names. I mean, yeah. it took months of talking to you before I knew your name. <laughs> yeah. And that was after I got your number, and I'm like, okay, that's who it is. <laughs> Which one is he? Which it, one is he? Yeah, I have to nickname people on my phone. I don't <laughs> think you had to get a nickname, because we talked so long about Doctor Who and stuff that I just knew who the hell you are. Yeah. You're so yeah. tall and look like him, and yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, I knew who you were. Um, so we met at Saints, right? Yes, and, uh, sir. And what... What was it? It was like a nighttime, I think probably after like a second Friday or something like that. Like one of the, it had yeah. to have been after midnight and just yeah. everybody's chatting on the, um, it's like a bunch of benches <clears throat> side by side. And I think most people who are friends at Saints are friends because of that bench, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's where all the conversation happens. And you can sit next to anybody and nobody's mm-hmm. going to say anything Yep. Um, unless they're saving the seat for somebody. But other than that, it's like, okay. And interjecting in conversations is pretty much all the time. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. There might be a little, um, what's that, uh, musical chairs for if you if you think you know you're going to want to talk between the two groups, you might sit, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I also, I, as you know, I get up and I move around. Yeah, yeah. Like, throughout the night, I get up and go sit somewhere else next to somebody else and go have conversations with them. Yeah, you are a wandering man. I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that from childhood? Uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I Tell always... me about your childhood. Oh, my childhood. <laughs> well, uh, well, I grew up uh, out in the middle of nowhere, uh-huh. uh, out in Bridge Creek. Bridge Creek. Yes. And we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, sort of. We're outside. I'm uh, sorry, uh, people. It's noisy here. Was Is Bridge Creek like this, where it's all... Yeah, 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 yeah but it's actual country, so there's not, you know, 23rd. Oh, right yeah, over yeah. there, we're gonna get yeah. top sirens and yeah. EMS and yeah, yeah, that, people yelling, "Hey, I'm gonna jump your fence! Is that cool?" <laughs> yeah, we live we live on a, a good amount of acreage, and I guess where I grew up, mm-hmm. playing on the creek and being a country kid. Right? Did you have to like murder chickens and stuff? Uh, no, I didn't. I actually have this weird phobia of raw meat. Oh yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, like it, it it gives me super high anxiety, and I can have a panic attack if I like touch and even plastic that's touched raw meat. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I can't even touch raw meat through plastic. Yeah. Like so, I when I go to the grocery store, I can't pick up raw meat. Yeah. I can go pick up all the vegetables and everything else, but raw meat, no. Yeah, Amber, my girlfriend, is kind of like that with like spiders and dead birds and stuff. Yeah, like, but not me. Like she will cut open an animal and fillet it and take the best parts and make it taste like magic. But yeah, yeah if there's a dead mouse in the ground, even if it's fresh, she. Doesn't See, I don't care about that. Like, whatever. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, it's a dead mouse. Pick it up by its tail. Like, yeah, whatever. So it's the morality of the act, the uh, murdering I, animals and. I, I, it's just one of those. It's it's a phobia, so there's no real oh, okay. like rhyme or reason to right, it. Yeah, I'm afraid of like heights and flying and shit like that. Yeah, that's just kind of there. I've done it. I've flown, and when I'm there, I'm fine. There's just a little anxiety that's constantly there, especially yeah. the day before. You know, yeah. It's take like, that and times it by ten, and that's what's like with my phobia of touching raw meat. Like okay. I seriously get like I shiver, and I'm like. Panic of true, panic yeah, attack, true, you know? true, exi- like massive anxiety. Oh, I've had those because of flying and stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've had like the night terrors where I, oh wake yeah, up panicking. Yeah. not so much in my adulthood, adulthood, but all through my teens, twenties. Yeah, there was the fear of falling. I constantly had falling dreams and stuff. I talked about it in one of the other podcasts. Those dreams were more like I was walking upstairs and I knew yeah, yeah, was yeah, yeah, I yeah. Fall, I heard it. You know? yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hey, I had to do my research, right? Right. Like, so, any weird, um, any weird dreams in your life? Like anything? Um, lately, no, not really. Um, I've been having. I have had some, uh, some not nightmares, but I don't remember them. I, yeah. just, I just know I would wake up in a panic state right. and be panicked. Pretty like on that panic side all day. Yeah. Uh, the other day, um, there was you know I read the fucking political news uh all the time all day in and out and surely that causes a little bit of anxiety i think it does for everybody but uh one particular idiot um who is, is a you know a representative of like it's like some state level bullshit like on a board or something some woman said that uh they want to deport anybody who's uh like she said the D- the geo the gop she was trying to speak for everybody she said that they want to deport everybody who's darker than a latte and as a Native American, I'm sitting here thinking how hard it's going to be to deport, you know, the hundreds of thousands of Native Americans, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it terrified me. And so I, I got a little sleep that night because I was working on a podcast, like, you know, editing and uploading and stuff. And uh, Amber comes home in the morning at like 6 a.m. I'm just like two hours into the sleep. And I'm dreaming that they're doing this to America and we're actually having this war. It's like, have you seen the, the show Handmaiden's Tale or like the read the books or anything? No, I haven't watched it yet. It's on my list of shows to watch, but I haven't. Yeah, and I yet. need to see it because they talk about they don't show the war. They just show the culture that's developed because of this, you know, these people. Um, the, basically, the Confederacy has risen again and has taken over, you know, portions of the country successfully. And they've installed... This well, I guess, I guess that would be like, you know, almost like alt history, but alt future. Yeah, totally. It's totally like that. It's it's really great stuff. I love the storytelling in it. But I had this dream that was like that, as if, you know, today's fears play out and they're deporting even Native Americans yeah. who are browner than a mocha, mocha latte or whatever. Or I don't know. They're, maybe they're talking about an iced latte, you know. Like, well, <laughs> I mean, I think they should really go off of, like, uh, Beyonce. Beyonce, are you darker? You cannot, you cannot be darker than summertime Beyonce. <laughs> right. That's just how it is. You can't be darker than that. <laughs> oh, my God. They're going to turn it into uh, America's Got Talent, and if you can sing well and entertain them, then you're not deported. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if there's some way... And then the U.S. government becomes their agent. Like, right. that's that's what happens, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I legitimately had a panic attack when she touched me to wake me up and, you know, say hello or good morning or whatever. I just, like, jumped out of bed trying to murder people because that was what was happening in my dream. Um, did you did you ever have, like, flying dreams, good dreams? Like, I, I don't want, you know, like, uh, we all have wet dreams and stuff. Like, what were some of the recurring good things that happened? Oh, well, there's a lot of times that I do have... Uh, dreams of flying yeah um so i mean that's but i think that's pretty common just because of it represents you know a freedom and with the stresses of life that makes sense that we all want that kind of freedom you know yeah so i know those are pretty common uh anything really specific it's you know it sounds ridiculous 
but it really like I've had I have dreams of like going to like get togethers with friends and really? just have yeah that's awesome and just having a good time with friends and like all kinds of random stuff happens like there could be a pirate ship that sh- you know whatever I don't know like yeah. all kinds of stupid stuff will happen but right it's still probably the best dreams is like being with friends and then doing random random crap yeah, uh, speaking of random crap, I heard maybe you say something inside off the cuff for a second about um, <laughs> uh, cats that are there's taxidermy uh, animals in a rodeo. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. So <laughs> there's this artist, her name is uh, Jenny Lawson. Uh, she wrote uh, her second book is called Furiously Happy. And so she grew up with taxidermy and her family and everything. And so, like, she's she loves taxidermy that's kind of like kind of like beaten up and kind of like you know sad and yeah. really like hair falling out and everything like poorly taxidermy things <laughs> okay <laughs> because she's she identifies it like she's broken this so are they and they need love too so Aww. yeah uh, but she had a taxidermy uh, raccoon that she would make that was posable that she made ride her cats uh, oh my god <laughs> and she called it cat rodeo because it was hilarious <laughs> to watch a cat try to freak out and run oh, away oh from god. something attached to its back oh my god okay well. just imagine that just imagine a raccoon <laughs> like a tiny raccoon on top of a cat oh, i'm picturing it <laughs> uh i'm not condoning people experiment with animals uh i was not a smart kid and i did the whole p- tape on the paw and tape on the tail and stuff and i feel really bad about it nothing bad happened to the cat but it did like it did the freak out because it had yeah, tape yeah, on the yeah, yeah, yeah. couldn't walk and tried to pull it off and it was miserable and that was the experiment i guess um but i feel really bad and i do not experiment on living things anymore <laughs> but i can see how a raccoon on a cat would be hilarious <laughs> and it's not harmful it's not hurting the <laughs> no, no, cat no, no, no. at all no i don't imagine she put concrete in it <laughs> yeah yeah no it's not like the cat's struggling to try to walk i can't breathe <laughs> it's like <laughs> crawling on the ground it's like for it's... the art hold still <laughs> it's death rose <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I didn't have my SD camera in. You gotta, <laughs> I got to she, al- she, she will also take that same raccoon. Like, her husband works from home and does, like, uh, video conferencing and stuff. Yeah. And so she'll sneak up behind him and, like, slowly raise up the raccoon behind her husband. Oh, my God. While he's on a business <laughs> conference call. That's awesome. <laughs> See, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that that's that's fun. hilarious. That's funny no matter who you are. <laughs> have you pulled any great pranks? Were you, like, the pranky kid in school? And stuff? Uh. Uh, no, but I did g- do a great, great prank this year for f- April Fools. Yeah, um, you know Melrose at uh, Saints. Yeah, is a, this is tall a... with a short hair girl oh, gosh, bartender, probably by by face then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know her if you saw her. You're like, okay. yeah, okay. So I totally told her on April Fools. I went up to Saints and uh, I told her that I just slept with a girl. Oh my god. <laughs> And I even like used my my friend Jessica, and I said, "Yeah, it was her." And I showed her a picture. She's like, "Oh yeah, no, I've seen you in here with her." And I'm like, oh, "Yeah." My God. So she totally was like, "Oh, I want to know all about it." Yada yada yada. She was so excited, <laughs> and I didn't tell her. I, I I said nothing. I just kept going with it. Kept going with it. I left. Oh no! <laughs> I went home and I got a text a couple hours later. She's like, "I will never trust you again." <laughs> Somebody called her out on it. <laughs> Somebody told her. Yeah, they were yeah. like, "You know, it's an April Fool's that's joke. Funny. Like, he really didn't have sex with a girl." No, right. I'm so keeping. You, I'm keeping my gold star. I'm good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good prank because then you get to do run a little experiment on both sides of the crowd, like her, whether she would spread that rumor far and wide, or like everybody else, whether they'd like call her out on the bullshit or yeah, tell her, exactly like, running the prank or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> good job uh what about your childhood were you a, an asshole were you a uh, no no i've i've always been pretty much a a caring person i wasn't an asshole until my 20s so did you ever ever get you know put in the back of a squad car yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what happened <laughs> oh well i'd rather not talk about that okay yeah right. but yes i have i, I have. mean would they still recognize your face I, okay <laughs> so what happened what happened is that there was uh i took some clonopin and drink uh a good amount of gin because uh-huh. I wanted to sleep. Right. I wasn't trying to kill, kill myself, right. but I guess I posted something on Facebook and one of my friends who's a licensed counselor oh. saw it and even the suspicion he has to call. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's, that's the obligation. That's, that's the obligation. Yeah. He has no other, like, I couldn't fault So what'd they calling. do? They kicked down the door? 
No, they came in. My uh, ex husband, I was living with him, and they, you know, he let them in, and they asked me, you know, are you trying to kill yourself? I said, no, I'm right. trying to sleep. I just want to sleep. Leave me alone. I yeah. was like, there's a gun in the other room. If I wanted to kill myself, I would have done it. Like, right. I yeah. just want to sleep. Leave yeah. me alone. Yeah. So they were like, well, we need to take you to the hospital, get you checked out, make sure you're not, you know, Jeez. OD'd or anything. Yeah. Like, fine, whatever. <clears throat> so, wow. yeah, they handcuffed me and put me in the back of the Oh, car. my God. Uh, That's, wow. That's quite the experience. Yeah. And Did then I ended up in a three-day hold at St. Anthony's. Uh-huh. And so were their facilities nice? I don't remember. I you slept. Know, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told them I wanted to sleep, so I slept. Yeah. I literally, I barely remember anything during that stay. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Wow. I'm glad yeah. you survived the not suicide yeah. experience. You know? Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I, I, mean I, I joke. I mean, I may hate life, but I don't hate it enough to kill myself. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. Suicide's not a, not an option. No, it's, I mean, I understand if you're you're ill, like you're ill, ill, and mm. you're in pain, and it's costing everybody. At that point, you're probably like able to tell people, and you know. Here these days, you usually have to fight for the right to even do that if you're like terminally yeah. ill, you know. So people really kind of know you've hired a lawyer. And oh, if I if I shit. ever if I ever get terminally ill, it, like if I get cancer, no, I'm not doing chemo. Right. I'm not going to live the last months, possible months of my life. Yeah. For for in being in pain and like just like I've seen what chemo does. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I haven't I haven't witnessed it, but you know. Yeah, it's. I'm not, sure it's the worst thing ever. I'm sure. Yeah, it's, I've seen people emaciated, you know, like lose over half their weight. Right, it's killing you, and how yeah. can you survive it? <laughs> exactly, that's what it is. That's literally. What I'd rather. I'd rather just you know live out my life, and whenever I get sick and I can't go out anymore, then I can't go out anymore, and it's over with. Okay. Right. I don't know. I think I might opt to try the torture and see. Well, with with the way technology and medical technology is going, it's getting better. They, yeah, yeah, within the next, by the time I think that I would get cancer, like you know, even if it's like in my fifties, right? That's still there's like, some targeted solutions. And yeah, some, that's still like thirteen years away. So, like yeah. you know, and that is more than enough time that we'll have some kind of. Like, Unfortunately, it's like another. It's like a number one killer, and then there's heart disease and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we still need funding for research, but it's working. Like, but I think, I, yeah, I think with the advancement as we go with computers and nanotechnology and, and nanotechnology repair, yeah, uh, using like different cells and whatnot to be able to go in and actually cut out and repair. Yeah, yeah. And as a nerd, like I am a science nerd. Um, I like this stuff. I like this biotech. The you know, getting better at both the, like the, the medicine on like the like the chemical level and the molecular level, building machines that deliver them, and then you know the lasers, like the optics, and just using those as tools as like a, you know a physician or whatever specialized mm-hmm. physician. Um, all that stuff is is played out in Doctor Who the same way sci-fi did back when like rockets was like the new yeah type yeah of yeah science. like what Star Trek did for rockets yeah, it's, yeah and it continued on through like Star Wars has got the like once once sci-fi is aged and it becomes the old west you know it's got its own version of yeah. like what may be possible what may be true the, but, it's it's the the future post-apocalyptic so yeah. they went so far with technology and then yeah and that's I like that about Doctor Who that they show even different planets are po- post apocalyptic or like used by like used up by mining or like they're controlled by authoritarianism and some are free and delightful and some you know some have lost their planet through war and some you know like the the uh, I guess the Time Lords kind of have their shit perfectly tuned in except for that once in a while time ending you know battle. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got to remember, you got to remember the time boards were destroyed until recently. Yeah, yeah, they're just now back. Yeah, like he he. Spoiler alert! Sorry, I should have said that oh, before. Yeah, yeah uh, if you don't watch the show, if you haven't, if you're not caught doesn't up, he, like so he doesn't he doesn't he, doesn't he go back to when the war is happening and then contain it in a bubble that's like hidden in a yeah. painting using or something uh, like that. using all the doctors using all the doctors every doctor okay and every TARDIS okay so they built that's a network how, of time yeah, that's, saver space like, yeah they floppy disk that down into a painting yeah they uh, <laughs> they put it in a stasis field so it's a time stasis is filled so time still progresses in there right but they can't go out of the bubble and time it's kind of time is different for where it's at kind of like having a marble of a planet the marble of a planet yeah yeah like like you just have it in your hand and it's in there it's there 
Do you mean like are you talking? And it's separate from you, but it's still there. So are you talking about like the whole like there's a planet and the atom in my finger? Or are you talking more like the cat in the movie where they had the universe in the jewelry? On yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like that was Men, men in black. black. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> it's totally a Men in Black type scenario. And the cat's name was Orion, I think. Or no, they were looking for Orion. I don't know if yeah. Orion was the cat or the name of the. Uh, they oh they thought it was like the galaxy that they were looking for or maybe the thing was in Orion the galaxy yeah yeah um, yeah yeah Orion's it was it, it, or, 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 Orion's belt Orion's belt oh and it was the cat the cat's name was Orion yeah. it was Orion's belt yeah that was written by some BDSM yeah know. totally, totally. <laughs> so, so, some furry or <laughs> totally somebody into some kinks and we'll talk about kinks next but we're gonna take a quick break again and we will be right back with Artless now. Welcome back to Artless Nap. I am still here with Blaine Mayo. Hey, I'm still here. Despite um, the heat, I'm still here. Yeah, it's we are outside. It's really hot. We, we are usually filming in my garage, but it's like murderous in there. And so now we're outside where you can hear people, my neighbors working and all of the... They're not locusts, they're cicadas. Cicadas. Yeah, like, cicadas. They're screaming right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a summer day. <clears throat> yeah, it is. It's an Oklahoma summer day, which isn't too bad. It's not too bad, but you've had to clearly like do your Doctor Who strip. And everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were talking about kinks, and I think uh, some people probably have a marijuana kink. I would bet there's like people who can't get off without having either marijuana substances... I know girls like the the THC lube stuff. It yeah. seems to be popular with like I yeah. guess guys too. I, I don't know. I've never used it. So I, yeah, I know I've heard a couple females say it's like the shit. It, yeah, it's wonderful yeah. stuff. Um, and then Oklahoma. So I want to talk to you about this. Oklahoma has had like a lot of weird shit go on with its laws and everything. Like yeah. catch catch us all up, all the listeners. <clears throat> okay, so like we all know that uh, medical marijuana passed. Yeah. Um, by pretty good margins, yeah. a lot bigger margins than I thought it was going to pass. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but the state's still battling, you know, like different regulations for dispensaries and licenses and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a huge change, especially being a mainly Republican state. Uh huh. It is. Um, did you hear about, okay, so they changed the rules. Like we voted them in and they had like their, um, they're very specific about what people could have like six plants, mature and six plants like seedlings Mm -hmm. um and uh i guess a medical doctor had to approve you know of your stuff like yes yes. um and then the health department like it's like the is it okay so what what happened is that we yeah we passed the law that legalized it yeah but the uh the oklahoma health department is actually in charge of regulating yeah this law and so that's why they can release their rules and it doesn't have to be voted upon a, yeah. by us it's just the rules that everybody has to follow right if they want the actual like health board license yeah and so they they added one that said no smokable pot yeah no buds uh no buds at all which is ridiculous you can't but have- you can have oils you can have yeah. edibles but you can't have smokable bud. But they're different forms of delivery, and we don't have, like, are, is, is it cannabinoids? Is that how you say it? Cannab- yeah, uh, yeah. Um, there's, like, there's, like, a lot in these things, in the, smokable, in the smokable, in the bud. And then when they boil these down, some don't survive the process in certain like, you extraction actually get, processes. You actually get, the uh, in the extract pr- process, you actually get more THC per volume than you do smoking. Right, but, but THC, THC isn't the only thing that, that is helping people medicinally, right? There's like other right, things. Right, right. Well, so. well, but CBD has been legal here for a while. So if you're... Yeah. <clears throat> Marijuana is more like... It's a basically a step up from CBD if yeah. you have other issues that yeah. other parts of marijuana's effects can actually help you with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, there's CBD. And, and with CBD, it's... Um, it's still the same. Like, you can buy CBD buds and smoke them. Really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I know people who prefer CBD that way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, there are... Okay, so, I, yeah, I don't know what all the effects are, but there are effects on these things that's in the bud that isn't isn't in all the CBD oils and everything either. Like, yeah. I think that, like, there are... I've, I've read that, and, and one of the guys in the health department or whatever, like, admitted here in Oklahoma, admitted that there's different... Um, benefits to the smokable mm-hmm. form than there are to all these other. Yeah. So it's just like a palette of types of medicine, and they're limiting uh, like one big part. Like yeah, the yeah, they're 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 limiting almost a, like really if you think about it, like a third. Of yeah, 
like like it really cuts it down a third. Of- and I, like I hate to say, like well, I don't hate to say it at all. Um, there there are people who aren't going to be able to grow their own. Like not everybody's going to become a gardener and do this. So if you're having to create your own form of medicine. You know, like, say you need a very specific kind of combination. You have allergies to whatever oils, and you can't find something on the market. But now this is an agreed-upon medicine for the state. You should be able to, at home, do what you want, you know, with these buds and stuff. I don't think you, I don't think you I, should. Once it becomes recreational, that won't be an issue at yeah, all. Yeah, that's true. Um, as long as you have your marijuana license, you can have six adults and six juveniles. And I'm sorry, that's a lot of weed. Yeah, like, it, yeah it is a lot of weed. That's a lot of weed. And, it, and if you're going through that much weed, like... So you grow for personal use, and yeah. so that's why that's why you know it'll eventually mellow out the price. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, that's gonna hurt the the uh, criminal, you know, the the organizations, the the ones. Everybody and here in Oklahoma City, we do have sex trafficking and stuff. There are you know legit like gangs and mafia type like situations where they're funneling drugs in and. We're sending the money back to wherever, wherever they are. Uh, what we're going to see is more of an influx of things like coke and meth and things like that because now they don't have to use that space to bring weed. Right. They yeah. can bring something that makes them more money. Right. They will tra- transition to what's more profitable, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's a business model. And right. that's exactly what they'll do. And so, like, I, I would love to say that, you know, it would help put drug dealers, but the only ones that are going to be put out are, like, the hippie ones. Yeah. Well, at least they'll stop messing with that weed. I don't want them, yeah. I don't want to trust yeah. them for manufacturing weed that people are using medicinally but having to buy on the black market, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the good thing about these licenses, is that, you know, you can grow it yourself. If Like, anybody can grow a plant, even in an apartment, you can have a small hydroponic system that you can grow, like, a couple plants in, mm-hmm. and grow them to maturity. Right. For cheap. I yeah. mean, really, like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars, and you can have a basic hydroponic system. Yeah. Have you have you seen these instances where they're making it illegal? Now, some of them have been turned back, but um, there have been some city ordinances and stuff passed where you can't grow a garden like in your front yard. Some yeah. even times, sometimes in the backyard, like so yeah. much you know footage you can only have. And um, what's what's your opinion on like uh, growing food on the outside? Do you do you think it should be regulated to Walmart or? No, I don't, because I live, I mean, you're setting me up for this, because, you know, I live in the country, and we have gardens, and we eat our own vegetables, and we have our own, like, grow our own tomatoes and everything, and if somebody tried to regulate us, like, no, 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 this is our land, we own this, we own all of this. Can you taste the difference between grocery store and food? Absolutely. Oh, yeah? I mean, it's so much nicer, also, that you could just grab, like, a cherry tomato right off the vine and eat it, because we use no pesticides. Right. So all you're going to get is maybe some dirt, like... Right, big deal. Yeah, so never I mean, I, I agree that the flavor is better, but uh, I don't. Know. I don't like the warm in the sun. You know, to me, I want to have to sit it inside and bring it down to. Like, oh, you can do that still too. <laughs> they're still wonderful, but I'm telling you, like warm I know, tomatoes. I see these people just popping in their mouth. They're like, mm, and I'm just like, oh, like warmed ke- like ketchup. No, I don't want the <laughs> warm ketchup. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, that's not what it's like. I, no, I, I'll, I'll, I'll br- okay. One of these times, I'll bring you a warm cherry tomato and I'll be like here I'll leave it in my car so it gets nice and toasty alright yeah and we'll get a packet of like McDonald's that's over here right across the street and I'll put, put a packet of that warm in my car and we'll, we'll see which it. one's better yeah. and if they taste the same <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to be like the one with lots of sugar in it. <laughs> well, not lots of sugar, lots of corn syrup. <laughs> lots of corn syrup, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you have any like uh, like other than meat, like actual food allergies or like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. you mentioned that like corn syrup is the thing. Corn like, syrup's the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with you. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, it's lactose for me, man. That yeah. does a number. It takes a good day and a half. I know people love hearing about like uh, all of our <laughs> medical issues. Welcome to Old Man Hour. <laughs> old Man Hour. This is forever. That's <laughs> what we do at Saints. We sit there and talk about our lives and catch everybody up. And then, well, I don't know, it's probably the equivalent to ranting. Everybody talks yeah, about Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. We What's all rant about our own things and then... Your interests. Yeah. yeah. I, I highly recommend people get uh, a bar as a replacement for... Now, if you really need some medical treatment, then go get medical treatment. <laughs> Please. But if you, if you don't have to, if you everybody needs therapy. You know, so that's just a given. But if you can get your therapy from going down to the local, like, coffee shop or the local Saints or whatever, you know, Saints is great. Like, he drinks water there, and everybody else drinks whatever the fuck they want. Yep. yep. Um, it's a restaurant, so, you know, I know that's not everywhere, but there are there are places that serve food, and so, yeah, man, just sit there and drink whatever you want. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah, you know, that like, patio out there is the best, because it's set up communal. I yeah. mean, you're going to sit by, na- by somebody that you 
probably don't know. Mm-hmm. And your conversations are going to overlap. It's yep. going to happen. Yep. And it's better than sitting inside and typing on the internet and looking up conspiracy mm-hmm. theories and, you know. Well, I do that on my phone anyway when I'm sitting there in yeah, front I know of you guys. You do. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I let you have your moments. I, yeah, okay, he's doing that. I'll he's talk to this person out. over oh here. Oh my god, look at his thumbs go. That <laughs> screen's going to catch on fire. <laughs> See smoke coming off. Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can tell when I'm I'm busy typing back around. Hold on, guys. Stick up that finger and like, I'm just, oh, focus on I look like I'm gritting my teeth. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Filming myself. Uh, like, like they can see through my camera, like my serious, like, I really mean this as I'm typing it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah. You said you don't like getting on the, the social medias. Yeah, no, I uh, was addicted to social media, really mm-hmm. bad. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so what's this called? Where you are? Uh, well, okay. Well, there's just straight up social media addiction, uh-huh. um, but there's also a component most of the time of this addiction is FOMO, fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Yeah, it's a fear that you're missing out on something more enjoyable and fun somewhere else okay. when you're at a location so you're disconnected from what's even going on around you because you're looking for what's going on that's better yeah i'm gonna have to find the name of this movie there's a movie that's coming out um, i just saw it like promoted somewhere uh they've got i think she's a 15 year old girl and they've got an actual actress who they followed around and they they show her modern like today like 2018 life and that was a big aspect of it was um they see she's on social media and she's trying to post, of course, you know, great times, but uh, she sees the videos of her friends at events they didn't invite her to. So mm-hmm. it's, it feels not like you're bullied, but everyone knows that thing when you found out your friends like. Yeah, you kind of feel cool. like left out. It's, yeah, yeah. You feel even more disconnected from those people. And even if you didn't have social media and you see that person a week later and they're like oh yeah i went to this party on friday night uh-huh. you're not sitting there going like why didn't you invite me like oh what did uh, well how was it because i was doing this on friday night you know right. like yeah. you i don't know it, it takes away it takes away that whole like th- that negative feeling of not being included so feeling not, like you're not included not watching it <clears throat> yeah and i i find that when people haven't seen you even on social media for a while or heard from you they don't usually assume you're just being a loser in the basement they think you're doing awesome things they're not doing yeah. you know everyone just kind of always assumes everyone's life is kick-ass and <laughs> yeah they're yeah. doing something fun um i mean you are because you're always driving up to well Plaza. i mean I, I you know <laughs> you say that but yeah it's it's not always it's my life is not that much fun no, no it's pretty it's pretty boring. Uh, I, I do a whole lot of, you know, watching Game of Thrones right now. <laughs> Game of Thrones? Because so you're not caught up. So no, no, up. no, no. I, well, I read I read all the books, and I'm on season uh, five, and so, so... So, are the books, like, true to form through season five? Uh, pretty... Uh, there's some variances, um, yeah. but most of the variances happened for, at the beginning of the show. Really? Of, like, the age of the, like, different Starks and, like, okay. the, like, certain things like that. But as the story's progressed, it's been, like, just after you get to love them so much, you're like, oh, yeah, whatever. Okay. And I know they're supposed to be younger, but it's yeah. cool. Yeah. I dig this person's doing this, so. Right. I mean, it's the most stellar cast I've ever seen in a television series thing. I mean, this is beyond a, a television type series now. This is, like, an epic. Yeah, it's, like, it's, 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 I mean, honestly... And I know a, a lot of uh, Lord of the Rings fans will probably be pissed. Oh, no. But You're I would, not going to go there. I'm going to go there. It's it's. I would say the the fans of Lord of the Rings and the like fans of Game of Thrones are on par for their nerddom you for the it. series. You heard it here. <laughs> Blaine Mayo claims on live podcast that <laughs> Tolkien can eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Game of Thrones yeah. rules forever. Yeah, come on, George R. 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 Martin. R. R. Uh, Martin just like, yep, yeah, he's god now. No, no, I'm saying that the fans of Lord of the Rings, how dedicated and how into the story they are, is yeah. equivalent to what Game of Thrones has in, in their fans. Right. Some crossover, some don't. Not yeah. saying one's better than the other. Can you, can you think of, like, a, a lesser common character that you would like to cosplay just because, like, it stuck out to you or something? And- oh, uh, okay, so many, many years ago, I was actually just talking about this with one of my friends, uh, I had a cosplay of Vash the Stampede from Trigun. What? What, what is this? Yeah, no, it's an anime. <laughs> okay, and, okay. 
and he wore this like kind of like okay so like he had this robotic arm that would actually morph into a gun and like, I've like, seen somebody else's version of this I think. yeah yeah and he had like kind of like blonde hair and it was kind of like faded from it part of the story was his hair was going black it was blonde uh, and so I had the black roots and the blonde wow I had a uh, you really went on it I had five inch platforms that were cherry <laughs> for this I had the bright red pants that he wears the uh, replica jacket uh-huh. of his from the show and then uh-huh. I had a, a like a cloth gauntlet kind of thing for, Jesus Christ so right? how long how yeah. many hours to take how many hours to make the whole thing um, really it wasn't hours to make it was just piecing things together okay. like finding pieces that would work from all different places the jacket was probably the one that I didn't make it I just went ahead and bought it because one of my favorite jacket makers Red Bull uh, Red Balls I was like oh we're doing a promo yeah, yeah. no Red Balls yeah. <laughs> no yeah. It, and, and they were a, a brand sold at Hot Topic for a okay. long time and wow. so they made Hot a lot Topic. of the old like goth jackets like the the different like trench coats and things like that yeah uh, we, we gotta, I know you remember this I do we, we gotta tell people because there's people listening that don't are old enough to we're like I'm in my late 30s so I I know there's kids listening that don't know what a Hot Topic is some kids don't go to and, the well, there's there's Hot Topic still it's yeah, just not the same it's not the same it's not the it's totally not the same yeah. it's like going to a club <laughs> that has fashion on the wall Walls. like yeah every kid who is into that shit that's like that's church you go and yeah. see like what everything looks like you might make your own shit at home you know you might find a black shirt and cut it up and yeah you know do your own stencil or something like that but man that place was like chock full of the alt kid stuff and it was authentic it wasn't like uh-huh. a mockery there wasn't like i mean they they helped they helped really you know create um sections of entire brands i mean you yeah. look at trip uh-huh. trip nyc they they were they have, they've always you know sold stuff they've always been popular in that alternative community but they really got into mass markets with hot topic right because all the hot topics sold trip pants mm-hmm. are trip pants the big bell bottom ones that were... the, yeah the huge with the like bondage straps and yeah. giant pockets and like usually black with like certain color stitching mm-hmm. or they were like a like I had purple ones at one time and right. So do with me real quick. We'll put some like like trans trip style music beneath it. Um, we don't have to stand up or anything, but uh, do it real quick. I don't know if the cameras are even running anymore. Well, that one's not, but this one might be. Um, so uh, we're, we'll put some trans music and let's do like our best imitation of like the dance style from that thing. Okay, oh ready? no! Oh my god! You ready? Okay. 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 Three, okay. two, one. Okay. Well, you got to remember, I was a candy raver. I was a candy raver, so right. And like, so you do your legs a little bit. Yeah, do my out. legs, and like, because I wear like sixty-nine inch round uh, bell bottoms. Like, yeah, I had some. I pre- I preferred the uh, the darker. Um, was a suede? Like, what was the suede? Uh, pressed uh, uh, corduroy, like the yeah, corduroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had the corduroy with like the deep pockets and a uh-huh. big black belt. I didn't have the like dog leash. I mean, I actually worked at PetSmart back then. So I didn't feel like buying, you know, six black, you know, uh, yeah. and then, then them see me in the club later and kind of, I don't know, I felt insecure. I probably could have and looked fine, but I don't yeah, think no, back you... then they had, I don't think they had stuff, a hot, hot topic that matched, that like, you know, was on the clothing or like mo- to modify it. You just had to kind of like improvise. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's always a lot of improvisation and yeah, the, those alternative communities like that, especially in the industrial goth community. Oh uh-huh, yeah. Because, I mean, I would, like, go buy gas masks and spray paint them myself. Oh, like, nice. Yeah. Just that, aspects of, like, different looks that I wanted see, to do. See, that led to cosplay. And here you are, like, spinning. Yeah, well, that, I mean, it was at the same time. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I was all the time, like, dressing up. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> in cosplay of some sort, like. Uh, that's actually awesome. You were always headed this direction. You knew who you were. There was no question. Yeah. That's pretty badass. Then you, yeah, so he was talking about, um, yeah, you just go to the secondhand stores for, like, nice uh, jackets. I was saying, there's no way I could afford a jacket. I I would wear jackets, but I can't afford a thousand dollars and, you know, a thousand dollar jacket. And he's like, well, you don't have to pay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I've never paid a thousand dollars for any kind of jacket. Yeah, so I'm going to have to start doing a little bit of scout. And I I, I think I'm pretty stylish, so. Oh, yeah, you definitely are. That's, I think, that's how people notice you first in in the bars, all of your clothing is a little nicer and so we all just like are drawn to the nicer 
fabrics and material and yeah, a very yeah. tall person and then of course it's you and it's me it's yeah. just me yeah. I think your, your glasses give you away quicker than yeah you know, yeah your yeah. height plus your glasses we're like yeah or or my hat yeah it's bruce <laughs> it's bruce mayo <laughs> it's bruce mayo it's bruce mayo <laughs> <laughs> did you did you always like live in the country? Have you lived in the city for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Norman? I lived. Um, I mean, I've lived in Norman. I've lived in Moore, uh, War Acres. I lived right off of Thirty Ninth Street, Thirty um, Ninth in Ann Arbor. So where's that? Where's Ann Arbor? Uh, Ann Arbor's right on the edge of Bethany and War Acres. Oh, okay, yeah. So I spent a little time in Bethany, and so it's a little weird out there. Yeah, there there was some heavy drug use and crime and mm -hmm. it was impoverished and, and there was a lot of street racing that goes on on 39th gosh i never got invited to those like you yeah were... <laughs> every friday and saturday night all you had to do was just show up <laughs> i was constantly i was working at the coffee shop yeah that would have been fun though to see it, well it's fun until you live down there and you're like i just want to go home get out of my way <laughs> Stop. Just stop. Let me just get home. You gotta time it. You, know, you guys right? can do whatever you want. Just let me get home first. To go all the way around. <laughs> I would. I would. I worked at uh, Penn Square at that time. Mm -hmm. So I'd actually take North Coast Expressway down all the way to, oh, uh, what was that, MacArthur? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was, I think I live right, I think it's MacArthur that's the... I'm just trying to picture where Penn Square, oh, MacArthur and, like, Pin Square, really? They're close to each other? No, not really. Oh. But you go down North Expressway and Oh, okay, okay. Instead down of going down Thirty Ninth yeah, Street. Right. Yeah. No, that thing cuts all the way across. Yeah. 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 I never use that one. It's just a little I mean it's a, it's probably a good mile out of the way, but if not to deal with those assholes. Uh -huh. and, oh, and the cops out there. Yeah. Like, or that, those assholes. Yeah. yeah. Not all of them are dicks, but no. there's a few dicks out there. But they do like to pull people over on Thirty uh -huh. Street, especially if you look like that you could be racing. Oh, so you what's your little outfit you're running you got like a sporty oh one. no not anymore well, at okay. the time at the time i had a, a mazda protege 5 it was a hatchback Shit. You, you know words that i don't um uh -huh. do you, are these did you reach in and pull some parts out and put other parts in um i had a swift switched out the um the air filter to uh -huh. a cold air cold air induction filter okay so that added you know not a whole lot so the engine stays bit. cooler whenever it's pumping yeah 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 out. so it can move it can perform more efficiently you can actually get more horsepower out of that that's awesome yeah and you can also get a, like a very minuscule amount of, amount of horsepower if you get the right stuff like the and mufflers and stuff too yeah i didn't change up my muffler yeah but i mean my car was fast enough for me i mean i i won't say how fast i would oh, drive no. to tulsa but i would get to tulsa very quickly <clears throat> that drive is horrendous unless you're going fast I'm yeah sorry. yeah no it's absolutely <laughs> true let's just say let's just say my car topped out at uh 200 holy crap <laughs> what the hell yeah that's that was its top end was uh, 200 uh, that you found out legally on a racetrack i think the statutes of limitations are no over. no 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 it was it no it was uh, i watched uh, some videos on youtube that's what it was <laughs> oh yeah that's how same fast. setup car you know that's, that's how yeah. fast it can go <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be back on artless nap <laughs> 